Okay, this is our video on background radiation. By the end, you should know some sources of background radiation. Understand why different people are exposed to different levels of radiation. It's not constant for us all. And be able to explain some of the dangers of background radiation. Okay, so first up, what is it? Well, background radiation is all around you. It comes naturally. Uh, it's always been around uh, before humans were on the earth. Uh, some sources are natural, have been around for many billions of years. Uh, but also humans have sort of added to the problem, if it is a problem, uh, with things like nuclear weapons testing, nuclear power stations. Why is it dangerous? Well, it's fundamentally it's ionising. And from your chemistry studies, you know that ionising is when electrons can be removed from atoms. And this can change the way that those atoms behave in terms of the body systems or cells so fundamentally ionizing radiation can damage or kill body cells cause mutations and predominantly we would call this cancer so it's a source of cancer uh, some sources of background radiation uh, from the ground rocks air there's radioactive gases in the air sometimes it's produced from rocks buildings uh, are made from natural materials they can be radioactive food or, or food if you've looked at carbon and carbon 14 carbon 14 is a naturally occurring radioactive element that we take in as part of our food so we become radioactive when we eat food at home certain old-fashioned televisions and coal fires uh, space cosmic radiation from uh, stars rains down upon the earth all the time uh, if you're an astronaut or if you uh, fly in uh, airplanes a lot you would increase your exposure okay medical radiation x-rays gamma treatment so human made and more human made stuff nuclear power accidents and weapons testing so what you could do and what you may have done in lesson at school is put together your annual dose of background radiation and this would be in the units of sieverts which you may see in exam questions and you'd have probably done this in micro sieverts so you'd have put a, a number together and what you would have possibly found out is that your average background dose is possibly about 2,500 micro sieverts of radiation. Uh, but one in three people uh, will get cancer, possibly more than will get cancer in their life, possibly more than that now. And that, that now. This is a chance of about a third. And the chance of getting cancer increases by 0 0.00001 for every 1,000 micro sieverts of radiation. So if you have like two to 3,000, it's increasing your chances by 0.00001. 3. Uh, some people would say, well, should I worry about this? And some people would worry about it because any increase is, is not good. Or other people would say, well, it's such a tiny increase, uh, we shouldn't be worried about it because the chances of getting cancer are so significantly higher anyway. Okay, a uh, nice little clip here if you do have time to watch it. Who, who annually receives the highest dose of radiation? Is it an astronaut or someone who smokes or someone who works in a nuclear power station? If you follow the link, I'll, I'll just flip to it. Uh, it is the most radioactive place on Earth. It's from a, a channel called Veritasium, which is quite a good channel. And it's about 11 minutes long and it's quite surprising at the end when it does uh, sort of tell you where the most radioactive place on Earth is and who would receive the highest dose of harmful ionising radiation. So get, watch that if you get a chance. In terms of questions you might get asked in the exam, uh, not a lot you need to know about background radiation. I've said it all really. It's really more about you applying your knowledge to questions. So you could have a table of data such as this. This is flight times between different uh, airports and the average annual uh, radiation dose in millisieverts. Uh, from someone doing this doing this flight uh, what is the relationship between flight time and average annual uh, average additional radiation dose sorry uh, and you can see that the longer the flight time the more radiation you get you're higher up in the Earth's atmosphere so there's less atmosphere to block the radiation so the higher up you are the more radiation you get indeed if you're on the International Space Station the dose of radiation you get is even more higher Okay, so the longer the flight, the higher the radiation dose. Uh, a flight from London to Jamaica takes 10 hours. Suggest a likely value for the annual radiation, the additional radiation dose, sorry. Well, Toronto, 8 hours, 0 0.05. Los Angeles, 11 hours, 0 0.065. So somewhere between them, closer to 0 0.065. So I guess at about 0 0.60 millisieverts. Some more data. Uh, the table gives the effects of radiation on the human body. So 10,000 
illness, death, down to 100, uh, lowest dose of evidence of causing cancer. A businessman makes 10 return flights a year from London to Jamaica. Should the businessman be concerned about the additional radiation dose received during the flights? Well, we've worked out it's about the additional do dose would be 10 times 0 0.6, which is 60 millisieverts, which is less than the lowest dose with evidence of cancer. So bearing in mind a high proportion of people will get cancer anyway, people here would say, well, it, it's not worth worrying about this. Additional dose is very low, so don't worry about it. But you might be more cautious and you might say that any additional dose increases the risk of cancer. So any additional dose is unacceptable. Again, in these style of exam questions, it's more or it's all about your reasoning rather than your yes or no. And finally, another study of so many aircrew found that 169 had developed leukaemia. Uh, in a similar sample of non-aircrew, the number of leukaemia cases was 156. Suggests why it would be difficult to be certain that leukaemia developed by the aircrew was caused by the flying time. Uh, the reasons here is the difference in the numbers is small, 156 to 169, and there might be other factors affecting them. So this is a study where you can't be sure that the causing effect, uh, the cause of the cancer was the difference in, in, in their flying time.